Well, uh, today's, today's sermon is from the Luke chapter 4, 14 to 30. Um, I had to edit it today. It got a little bit long, so, so I cut out a bit. So, you know, it's going to, might be a little short, but anyway, uh, in our scripture reading for today, you get to hear Jesus' first sermon. Jesus is in his hometown congregation. He takes a passage from scripture and he starts to speak about how that passage of scripture relates to the everyday lives of his hometown neighbors. But the first sermon preached by Jesus, the Son of God, does not have the kind of effect that you might expect. The congregation gets so angry that they take Jesus out on the brow of a hill and they're going to throw him off a cliff. And now, now Jesus expects me to preach about this same exact event to our current day congregation. So I'm hoping that you guys are a little less, have a little less rousing response. So what I'd like to do today is show you a little bit of what Jesus did with that scripture from Isaiah. The passage that Jesus reads is from Isaiah 61. The prophet is comforting the people of Israel after they have returned from their captivity in Babylon. And the passage highlights how Israel is central to God's plan for the world. God will bless Israel first and put them above all other nations. And finally, the verse that Jesus leaves off says that the prophet will proclaim the day of vengeance of our God. That's the piece he leaves off. And Jesus cuts off all of the verses that highlight how all of the other nations will bow down to Israel and serve them like slaves. Strangers shall feed your flocks, shall stand and feed your flocks. Foreigners shall till your land and dress your vines. Jesus leaves all that off. And the congregation knows it. Then Jesus goes on to remind them that God sometimes works to bless people of other nations, even while Israel is in need. Basically, in his first sermon, in his hometown, Jesus is saying that you are not as special as you think you are. <clears throat> Ouch. And they got his message loud and clear. Jesus seems to be saying that God's blessings and God's love are not limited to the traditional insiders. Jesus is not going to play that us versus them routine. Instead, Jesus is saying that God has always loved God has always loved all of the people of the world. It just so happens that the Jewish people were given the mission of carrying that message of God's love to all the world. But unfortunately, they thought that they were going to be more blessed and more special to God. So they became very angry <clears throat> when Jesus clarifies that God loves everyone. <coughs> Excuse me. Just as much as God loves them. <clears throat> so, what can you and I learn from this? <coughs> Excuse me. What can you and I learn from this first sermon of Jesus? Well, it seems that we Christians can also drift into the mindset that we are the only ones that God loves, that we are the only ones that God is going to bless 
with eternal life and eternal salvation. It makes you feel more special and more holy than those other people outside, those outsiders, those foreigners. It is, it is a natural mistake to make. Almost every country and every religion makes the same mistake. And yet, you can see it in the words of Jesus, and in the letters of Paul, and in the amazing expansion of the early church out of Judaism into all the world. God has no intention of blessing just one group of people. God has every intention of blessing the whole world with eternal life and salvation. <clears throat> in the Gospel of John, you hear, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him may not perish, but have eternal life. What we forget to memorize is the next line. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. And I would add that the whole world might be saved through Him. And Jesus says in our Holy Communion, in Holy Communion, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Your purpose and mine as the holy people of God, as Christians, is to tell the whole world about this salvation that Jesus has already given them. They don't have to earn anything. They don't have to believe just like you and I believe. Jesus has simply saved the whole world, forgiven them. God loves those Muslims just as much as God loves you and me. God loves those Syrian refugees just as much as God loves you and me. And it is your job to tell them that and to show them that with everything that you do and say. And yes, I know that can be a bit of a challenge. Might require a bit of sacrifice. It certainly does require you and me to change our focus from just taking care of ourselves and our, in our own church to focusing instead on caring for the ones that you don't know. The ones that you might feel a little threatened by. That Jesus, he was a radical, and he will continue challenging you and me to love more, and to give more, and to forgive more than you might feel comfortable with. But if you follow him, Jesus will also help you to experience the love of God and the grace of God more fully than you can imagine. And on the way of this journey of life and love and grace, Jesus will show you eternity and the awesome reality of God in every moment of your life.